You needed to get rid of your shop. What? Where is this coming from? I keep cleaning up sawdust everywhere. I'm sick and tired of it. What do you want me to do about it? Fix it. So my wife is making me move out my shop. Irina's always wanted a nice home gym, and let's be honest, I would like that as well, but we don't have the extra room in this house to do that. I'm currently in the works of figuring out a shop situation, possibly having a different shop, not at my home. I'm both bitter and sweet because I've built a lot of cool things in the shop, and it's in my home, so it's super comfortable. But the really great part is I now have bigger space that potentially could be available to me to have bigger projects, and I don't have to have my kids running in and out distracting. So before we can talk about what we want to do with this gym setup, we have to have to have a clean slate, and uh, I got to get rid of all my tools. Let's get packing. Oh, I could have ended badly. Wheels are great to move around your garage. They suck for trailers. It helps being a pro at Tetris. It's an adult version of that. It's weird, I feel like I'm saying goodbye to something. I'm not gonna see these tools for a while, actually, so I hope I don't need anything in the meantime. Wow, we got a blank slate and it's wild to me to see how much wear and tear I put on the floors here between paint and spilled epoxy. Boy, oh boy, there's a lot of hard work in here. So here's what we're doing next. We gotta beautify this place. The gym is gonna be over here. There's gonna be squat racks and rowing machines and free weights and treadmills, all this stuff. The really cool things I'm seeing on home gyms is there's always some kind of backdrop. So I don't wanna do pallet wood. I think it's gonna be dated. I wanna make it modern. So we're gonna do board and batten going around this entire facility. Well, facility, my shop. Uh, it'll be five inch on top, five inch on the bottom, and then we'll do three and a half inch styles going down the vertical. Let's start chopping. Rails are done, listen to the styles. Yo, this is looking so freaking cool. It literally is starting to look like the inside of a house, like not a garage. Board and bats on, I gotta start wood filling all the brad holes, caulking this whole sucker patch up all these holes and then paint this thing. And paint is gonna be actually a very interesting color that I don't think Irene is even expecting. I'm gonna do the board and batten white, the door white, and then I got a really cool green color for the wall that would be more of a golf green. And of course, I packed away my respirator, so I get to be reckless right now. Look how good the board and batten looks. It looks like the inside of a house, like a living room. This is wild. Now the base color, I've, I've been dragging this along and I couldn't figure out which color I wanted. I knew I wanted green to match where the golf simulator would be, kind of like this golf course thing. So the color that I went with is a courtyard green from Sherwin Williams. Yes, this looks like Gumby green right now, but once it settles, there's gonna be more olive tones, which I think is gonna be perfect for the space.
Now you might be wondering why I'm leaving this space unpainted. I'm gonna put a projector here to display the a big screen, essentially. So I'm gonna have this painted white, so I'm not gonna waste any paint. Also, I'm dying to hear how many people are livid about this color. I promise you, once it cures, it'll look awesome. First coat's on. I'm gonna let it dry a little bit, hit it with a second coat, do all my touch-ups, because there's gonna be a ton of them, as you can see and then I'll show you guys how that looks. The paint is cured and I absolutely love it. It looks like the golf tournament, the Masters. It's perfect combination. I got everything touched up and now we're ready for probably the most important part of this gym. As you already know, part of my shop, I have a heated garage. And though it's great, it's an overkill. In the summertime here, when it's 104 degrees outside, you're cooking in here. Therefore, you don't wanna work out. Let's fix that. So I partnered with Mr. Cool to install a DIY multi-zone mini split. With this 24K system, we're able to not only heat this garage, but also cool it. And they made this completely DIY friendly, so you don't have to go calling an HVAC expert to come install. Everything is already pre-filled, pre-plumbed, it's ready for install, and it gives you everything you needed to do it all yourself. First order of business, put this template on top, cut this hole, marker screws, and start to drill. This is probably a good location here. We hit a stud, great. We gotta move it one inch to the right. Match it clear perfectly. Let's drill the hole from the other side. Instructions call us to install the mounting bracket next for the wall unit. Next, we're gonna push this wall sleeve through. Next, it wants us to slowly bend out this copper tube. You don't wanna do too fast or too hard or too sharp because you don't wanna put a kink in it. This is our condensation drainage. This is our power and controls. And they want us to wrap it with this vinyl tape. Now they want us to feed this through the hole and mount the wall unit on that bracket. Probably be a good idea if I had extra sets of hands, but we're stubborn. We're just gonna sweat through it. Oh, there it is. Now for the condenser, we need to get this puppy outside and I'm gonna try not to break my back and ask Kyle to help me carry this. So the condenser needs to be 12 inches from the wall as instructions say. Okay, that should do it. Now we have to anchor this down to the ground. I'm gonna use my SDS hammer drill and I'm using these half inch lag bolts that go, oh, half inch lag anchors that go into the cement. So we're gonna drill our hole, pound the sucker in and then secure it from the top. Once they pound it in, start tightening it. Once it's tight, it'll expand the collar down below and you can unscrew your nut right after. Let's position the sucker back on. Now the condenser is anchored, let's start connecting the rest of this plumbing. All right, now this is where we gotta be a little gentle. Bend this in place into a 90 degree while supporting the bottom so you don't create any kinks again. All right, that should do it. Let's connect the rest of this line. Copper, carefully unroll it, be gentle, be gentle. Gray cap to gray cap, black cap to black cap. These lines are already pre-filled with Freon and I can hear it releasing like This is so cool, I can't believe I'm installing my very first HVAC from start to finish. All right, power to this thing. All right, now what we gotta do is we have to do a leak test. So we have to open this up right here, release the Freon into the unit, and then do a leak test. I hear it. It's like turning on a water faucet for the first time. Please don't leak. All right. So to do a leak test, I learned this trick from when a guy taught me how to install a gas line in my house. Get soapy water and spray anywhere you had a connection. So here, get it completely around. And what you're looking for 
if there is a leak, it will start bubbling up or even pushing it all away. Like, pss, everything looks nice and stable there. It's like finding like a, a hole in your tires. Beautiful. Looks perfect, no leaks, now we wrap it. Now that we're sure there is no leak, they provided these sound dampening pads, which is interesting. And they want us to wrap this connection, including the drain hose. I love it when people include everything you might absolutely need. In fact, they included crescent wrenches, which is sweet, because I might pack my way. Oh my gosh, that is beautiful. Now I know why it's sound dampening pads. They included it because just in case this might rattle in the housing, this keeps the sound down. This is great, that's a really smart idea. To conceal this hosing, I'm using the Mr. Cool line guard, so it's a channel. The back piece screws in the back, and then the front piece just snaps right on top of it, making all this nice and pretty, and then later on we can paint it to match our house, so we can blend it easier. I also attached a little hose thing here. Because this is a DIY unit, you kind of have to have the excess amount of hosing, which is not a problem, just put it right behind it. But I had that electrician come out over the weekend to hook up my kill switch box here and the breakers. Let's hook this puppy up to this condenser. That's left now, let's go hit the breaker. I heard a beat. I think we got power. Let's see. That's slick how it displays the temperature right on top there. This is incredible. I love how slick it is and how quiet it is. I'm curious to find out how the outside sounds. All right, I'm gonna hold my mic up so you guys can get an honest listen. That's it. I mean, I don't even know what to compare it to. It just sounds like a refrigerator in your garage going. So nice. I'm sure to link this unit that I used in my description below. A big thank you to Mr. Cool for partnering us and help support this channel. Now, let's go back to setting up this gym. So I painted this screen white because the projector that I mounted on top is gonna to be displaying. So instead of getting a ginormous television, which will bankrupt me, this was the best option to get the biggest screen and save some money. Now that it's white, we need to put a barrier or border around it. I'll be using one by three select pine and I'm gonna stain it in a fruit wood. So freaking cool. That looks awesome. I still gotta get rid of this heater, but again, I gotta make a listing on Facebook, put up for sale. But in the meantime, I gotta start working on this shelf here. I'm using these corbels right here. I'm gonna screw them right into flush with the top of the trim. That way the board can sit right on top of it and I'll make this a beautiful edge. All right, so our countertop shelf thing is done, secured. Now, we're gonna make this extra. I'm gonna run LEDs underneath it. And the reason why, not only for accent lighting, but because the overall feel of the, the, the gym here, I want it to be like moody, a little bit dim, but enough lighting that you are aware of not to hit your foot against a, a dumbbell. So that'll create that plus with the golf simulator going over there. It needs to be dark enough, but light enough for you to see. So this will act a really cool accent lighting. Woo, that's sweet. All right, that's gonna look great. Okay, so for the lighting over here, I'm gonna get rid of this light, it's too bright. I'm gonna convert this outlet into a housing for this LED light. So these are a light fixture I bought on Amazon, it's like 70 bucks. These are individual ring lights. So each one lights up this amberish color. It's gonna sit right there, allowing for the garage door to go over, oh, don't die and fall on oh, this ladder. I hate ladders so much. Turn that into a cool atmosphere over here to lift weights in the Iron Paradise. These are 
so cool. I, I sound like a broken record saying everything's so cool, but that's a perfect touch for this. Let's kill this light here. Oh yeah, this is exactly the vibe that I'm going for here. This is perfect. What's next? Mirrors. Now the cool thing about mirrors in a small space like this is it makes everything look larger. Okay, how high to hang it now? Now this one's a little tricky because I have my conduit for my outlet coming here. So I don't know, maybe, I don't know. I really don't know. Maybe I'll put a blocking behind it to space it out. All right, let's work on the matting situation. All right, I'm a little winded, but I just scored a crazy deal on Facebook Marketplace on this turf. It's 17 by 15 feet. It's not enough to get the whole thing done, but we're gonna do mats over there. But this is like putting turf, artificial putting turf that you put in your backyard. Ooh, I gotta do cardio more often. All right, I'm gonna go bring the simulator in here while I wait for the gym mats to show up. All right, mats just showed up. I got about uh, 160 square feet. These are typically self-explanatory. They have little transition pieces, but for the most part, you just connect them like Lego pieces. So this is where it's gonna get a little finicky. I need it to be tight against this so this mat doesn't move around, but because there's all these teeth, it's kind of hard to say where to cut it, so I'll kind of just do my best. Absolutely perfect amount. It looks incredible and I have one chain left over. This is picture, picture perfect. For these transitions, I gotta add some double-sided tape so nobody keeps flinging this up. Let's throw that off. Now, for the finishing touch that I'm most excited about. We got recliners. All right, let me fire everything up and I'll show you guys how everything looks. Hey, thanks so much for watching this video. If you are more interested about to find out where my shop went or where it's going, make sure you listen to my podcast with my wife, Next Door Neighbors, available anywhere. Check the link in the description below. And in the meantime, here's a video that I think you might enjoy.